This is one of those research topics that I wish wasn't the way it was. As in, I wish in reading this study the results were different. However, it also is very personal to me in that it's something I experienced, and therefore finding research studies that are about this that actually find the results that this one did is pretty personally validating, and therefore I kind of also like it. It's a very dissonant experience. And what topic am I referring to? So glad you asked. The topic is dyslexia and issues with sleeping. Now, you would think that because it's commonly known that there are typically sleep issues with neurodevelopmental things like ADHD or ASD, you would think that there would be a lot of research on this because there's a lot of research on those things as in the relationship between sleep in ADHD or ASD. In fact, between 1970 and 2017, at least according to the current study that I'm looking at, there were 10,632 studies looking at the relationship between ASD, ADHD, and sleep. So like one or both of those things in sleep, lots of studies. But when it comes to dyslexia in that same time period, there were around 20, which is a much smaller number and therefore evidence that there's a gap in the research here that should be studied. And gradually, it seems like that's actually starting to happen most recently with this study, this study which came out in July of 2025 that's trying to find a relationship between sleep issues with dyslexia and anxiety. So let's talk about it. The title of this study, which I'm going to read because it's long, is A Community Study on Sleep Characteristics and Anxiety Symptoms in Children with Dyslexia. In this study, they had a sample of 160 children, but they didn't actually interview the children. Instead, they interviewed the parents, and they had them fill out two different questionnaires. One was the Children's Sleep Habits questionnaire, and the other was the Spence Children's Anxiety Scale. The primary goal for this study, as you might expect based on the title, was to explore if there was a relationship between anxiety that dyslexic children are experiencing and their sleep disturbance. Because there have been other studies, like there was a study that was published in 2016 that found that 44% of dyslexic children experience clinically significant sleep issues versus only 8% of their typically developing peers. And because that's already been established, this study was looking at the relationship between anxiety that dyslexic children are experiencing and those sleep disturbance issues. This study also very specifically only wanted to include dyslexic children. So they actually started with a sample of 800 and narrowed that down to 160 participants by eliminating anybody who had an additional diagnosis of ASD or ADHD, and also by eliminating someone who even suspected that they might have a diagnosis of either of those things or another factor that would have potentially influenced their sleep. So as best as the researchers could, they made it so that this is truly a study about the relationship between dyslexic children and sleep disturbances. What's interesting about what they found though is that despite the fact that they were primarily looking at the relationship between anxiety and these sleep disturbances, the general actual like results of the study, as in the amount of dyslexic children who were in the study that they found experiencing issues with sleep, was actually almost more interesting than the anxiety piece. First off, they found that 66% of the children who were in their study experienced clinically significant sleep issues. Which, if you remember back to the percentage I mentioned from the earlier study, which was 44%, 66 is a much higher percentage. And while this may not be a perfectly generalizable study, that still seems to indicate there's definitely something going on here between dyslexia and sleep disturbance issues. The other thing that they found that was very interesting was that the average amount of sleep per night that these dyslexic children were getting was around 9.39 hours, which is within the window of 9 to 12 hours that's typically, typically recommended for children, but that's very much on the low end of, of that spectrum. They also found that there were three particular issues that were most commonly experienced by these children. The first was a sleep onset delay, which is basically where their bodies didn't want to fall asleep until later than maybe what would have been considered the right time or the healthy time to fall asleep. Sleep anxiety, which is anxiety about the prospect of going to sleep, which does not help with the process of falling asleep. And then also daytime drowsiness, which makes a lot of sense if on average they're getting potentially less sleep than they maybe should be getting. It is also very worth noting, since after all this study was about the relationship between the anxiety that these children might be experiencing and their sleep disturbance issues, that they did also find a correlation there. They found that approximately 18% of the children in the sample were experiencing clinically significant anxiety, so they did sort of find what they were looking for, which was that the anxiety does exacerbate the sleep issues, they just also found that 
it's not the cause of the sleep issues because a significant portion of the children who weren't experiencing clinically significant anxiety according to their parents, which I'm going to come back to that in a second, but a significant portion of these children were still experiencing the sleep disturbance issues even without the anxiety. Now, that parent piece that I do want to mention, both of these questionnaires were filled out by the parents, not the children. And therefore, the results of the questionnaires are based on the parents' perception. And while it's likely that parents are reasonably aware of what their children are experiencing, it's also reasonably possible, in fact I would argue very possible, that there are some of these parents who are not actually aware of whether or not their children are experiencing anxiety. Because it's very common for children, particularly children who might feel like they're a burden or who might feel like they're the problem, which is pretty common with dyslexic children, it's common for them to mask some of these things and to try and hide it from the adults in their life because they don't want to be more of a burden. And therefore, I personally wouldn't really be surprised if there was a higher percentage of these children who actually were experiencing anxiety that just didn't make it out into the results of the study. Regardless of that, though, the primary finding of the study, which was that 66% of these children were experiencing sleep disturbance issues, is hugely profound. Because when you're doing research and you find a number like that, that's like, oh yes, there is, there is absolutely something there. We need to study this more because we need to figure out what's actually happening there. And that is a question that has been looked at some in previous research, but so far there's been nothing incredibly conclusive found. There have been a few other studies that have seen various things in terms of what type of sleep dyslexic children are experiencing at different times, or how long they spend while they're sleeping in things like deep sleep, but there's still not actually any really conclusive answers there about what's happening. All we know at this point is that there's definitely something happening, which should be enough to motivate this to become an area that gets studied more, because struggling with sleep has a significant impact on functioning. It impacts memory. It impacts the ability to focus or pay attention. It impacts the ability to learn, all of which are things that dyslexia also impacts. And so if you think about how dyslexia does that, and then you compound it with experiencing difficulty with sleep, that kind of does explain why it might be so common for dyslexic students to struggle. Because in addition to the dyslexia, they're also dealing with more fatigue than potentially their peers are. Now that we've kind of gone over the study, what should you do about this? Well, if you're the parent of a dyslexic child, check in with them about their sleep. Don't just assume that they're sleeping fine. Ask them about what their sleep is like. Do they enjoy sleeping? Do they feel like they fall asleep easily? Or is that something that they struggle with? It's also really important, which this is important for everybody, but I would argue it's very important to also pay attention to sleep hygiene. What is the bedtime routine like? How much consistency and stability is there? And how much time before bed do we spend preparing for bed, preparing our bodies and our brains to actually know, hey, we're about to be going to sleep, we need to start getting ourselves ready for that. I'm pretty sure at this point we haven't found any magical solutions here that if we apply this to our dyslexic children, it will make it so that they sleep well. But the more we pay attention, and ideally the more research that's done here about maybe even why this is happening, the better we'll be able to support helping them get a healthy amount of sleep. I personally would also love to see some research done on the relationship between sleep difficulties and dyslexic adults, because thus far I have not been able to find any research on that, but I know that I personally am not best friends with sleep, and I've made two videos on like TikTok and Instagram that I've, that I've been about this topic, and both of those have received a pretty decent response from people who were agreeing that yes, sleep is an issue and I'm dyslexic, so I would love to see more research on that in part because it seems like it'd be helpful for knowing what to do, and in part because it's also just very very validating to be like, oh, so this is the reason that that's so hard for me. Either way, thank you for making it this far in the video. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you're dyslexic or you're the parent of a dyslexic child. Has sleep disturbance been a thing, or has sleep actually been something that you've been very good at? Let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and I hope that you have a lovely whatever time of day it is, wherever you are.